Welcome to the Late Night ASMR Show. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Daniel, aka Hashlips. And you are joining me this evening where I had this brainwave and I just thought I'll make a video. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can 10x your career as a developer, how you can become a faster, more efficient developer, how you can go from being a junior to be promoted to mid-level or from mid-level to senior or senior to lead. It is all about this thing that you can do that's going to make your career as a developer grow at a tremendously fast pace. And who doesn't want that, right? It is not a secret. It is not something that only a few people know. It's quite general, but it really does help. In all my years of development, I've always done that. And I've always found that because I do this, I end up knowing what to do in my career, knowing what to do in certain situations, knowing how to execute things faster without any hurdles. And that made me grow in positions at companies like I have. So let's get into it. I'm going to start off by telling you a short story so that you can visualize why I am saying that this thing is very important to do. Let's imagine you just finished college or a university as a developer and you are now going to take on a job as a junior developer somewhere at a company. Uh, this story and this method applies to whether you're junior, mid-level, senior, or lead. But uh, imagine you just get your first job and you think that you're going to code every single day. It's going to be joyful. You're going to code those uh, nine hours a day, you know, fully work on those projects. You come to realize that most of your day as a developer you spend in meetings, in ceremonies. You, you spend planning what you're going to do uh, instead of implementing it the whole time. You have uh, documentation to fill out. You also have a lot of admin to do. So you will find that through all these alignment sessions and planning sessions to actually do the piece of work, the actual code, it takes a long time. And it also is very needed, right? This is part of the developer job. But most of your developers out there would know that the time that you spend actually physically coding the solution to the problem uh, is probably between 20 and 30, maybe 40% of your time uh, throughout a work day, maybe even less. It differs between jobs and scenarios, of course, if it's a mature company or a startup and what your job or your requirement is there. But in general, what I found is that the time that you spend coding is really a lot less than 50% of your time when you have a day job. So these things are very important and it's part of the job of being a developer. Um, but fact is, there's not enough coding, actual coding happening in a daily job. And this is a problem because as an athlete or someone that is highly skilled at something like a musician, if an artist doesn't practice on a daily basis for countless hours of their skill, they slack at it, right? They, they don't improve it, but it maybe stays the same or stagnates. The moment that you find yourself doing a repetitive job, something that's the same, you know, maybe you doing APIs and you know, have to do all the routes, you know, for your company or something, and you do that over and over and over, you're going to get muscle memory and doing that one specific task, but you're not going to expand. And if you do not expand and work on something else, how are you going to grow or even do another thing um, as quick as you would uh, versus when you have practiced doing a different thing already, if that makes sense? So the fact is, there's not enough practice when it comes to your daily job. Here's the thing that you can do to improve that. And that is to have a side project. What do I mean by a side project? And hear me carefully here right now. It is not a side job. Please do not get yourself in trouble and take on a side uh, job and then, you know, do moonlighting. That's not what I'm referencing here. I'm talking about a passion project, something that you work on that's yours, that you can be proud of, something that you've always dreamt of building, but you never had the time or you never had the courage to do it because it was too difficult. And that word difficult is something I want to speak uh, speak about because this is what we're going to address and something that we actually want to move towards right anyway um, this is the whole uh, secret in the video or the thing you have to do is to actually have a side project while you're working now you can work on the side project your own time after work hours of course the most important part is that you do work on it right? And you need to find something that you're passionate about so that you actually want to work on it. And uh, every developer will know uh, if you are a developer, you always have that one friend that comes and says, hey, I've got this great app idea. 
right? They tell you about this app idea and then maybe in your head you think, well, that's a great idea, but it's kind of difficult. You know, I cannot do that alone because maybe I'm not a, a back-end developer. I'm only a front-end or maybe I'm only a back-end and I cannot do the front-end or maybe I'm not an iOS or an Android or uh, I don't know how to work with these technologies. So if you've ever find yourself saying that to yourself, that is a good indication to say, pause, wait, why is that? Because these days with technology around us, with AI around us, um, with the internet at your fingertips and endless amounts of content, you can technically build anything you want to. So the question really becomes, do you want to build it? It is not a question of can I build it? It's just, do you want to build it? Of finding a project that you can work on that will in turn improve you as a developer. And just to touch on some of those points, why that is, is that think about it, right? You do your daily job, maybe you do your API. After work, you go and eat, you have some time with the family, and you spend another two hours working on a passion project. Those two hours, you're gonna spend on something completely different, right? Maybe in, even in a different language, and you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna get stuck because you need to choose something that is difficult or something that's out of your comfort zone. Because the moment you do that, you expand your knowledge, you expand your thinking, and you also run into problems which you need to search and resolve. Even if you spend those two hours just reading up on how to resolve an issue that you're facing, that is so valuable. And the reason why it's valuable is because if you do that time and time and time over again, while you're building this you know, passion project, when you do get to your job and you do encounter these issues, you know exactly how to solve them. When your boss comes and says, hey, can you uh, possibly create this quick front end for me? I know you're a back end, but can you just make this cool little UI? And in your passion project, you've actually built a UI. Then you can go ahead and do that, right? And um, when those kind of interactions happen, and you become a more confident developer with your, in your skill and also in your proficiency and your speed, uh, your boss will pick it up and of course, hopefully, you'll get a promotion or something, right? But apart from that, it is in general just to feel more at ease when you code, to feel more confident when you sit in front of the computer, have a problem and solve it. Now look, it's not going to always be sunshine and roses. There are going to be issues that you face regardless. There's always issues that you need to resolve, right? That's why you're a developer. You build solutions and you solve things. We are puzzle, puzzle solvers. But at the end of the day, it does make it easier when you have something you're working on that is completely different from work and that you enjoy, right? And so that is what I want to encourage you to do if you do have a day job. If you are a junior developer that's just starting, even if you are a lead or senior and you know you are so good at your job, if I feel like if you are so good at your job and it becomes so easy that you don't have to think about it, you know, change things up because uh, the moment you feel like that, you're going to feel bored and you're going to want to move, right? But instead of doing that, rather work on a passion project, you know, so that you can transfer those skills into the, the company that you work for. Uh, you can improve yourself as a developer and it just works out beautifully every time okay and whether that project sees the light of day who cares you can start as many of these projects as you want so that is my number one tip so i want to go through a bit of resources here because uh, i have some cool resources that i always uh, go to whenever i want to do something or even if i don't have a passion project but i want to do something that you know, interest my mind. That was a long conversation, uh, but it's needed to understand why we need these projects. Now, to get to how you pick one is up to you. You can choose whatever you want to do uh, or if you want to do one, but I can guarantee you this, if you spend an extra two hours in the evening coding on something you love, it just quadruples the way that you're going to grow as a developer. So go ahead and try it out at least for a week or so and let me know how you find it. So the first thing that we are looking at here right now, this is just a GitHub page. It is uh, to a repository, pointing to a repository that says build your own X. So build your own X is made by Code Crafters and thank you for making such a lovely repo. It has an abundant list of ideas that you can build, uh, you know, in different languages. So you can see C++, C Sharp, 
Uh, they are all mixed up, but here you can see even there's JavaScript, which I love. For example, learn how to build a blockchain, right, with JavaScript. And uh, you can do that, right? If you want to do Node.js, you can create a Discord bot. And each one of these resources takes you to different resources where you learn how to actually do it. You can also watch YouTube videos to do it. But please, one thing when you do create a passion project, one important thing to do is to instead read documentation. Uh, it's okay to watch a YouTube video on how to do things step by step, but I do encourage you to veer away from that tutorial. Instead of following step by step, maybe look at the base concepts and then start trying it out. If you get stuck, maybe go back to the video. But at some point, you will need to veer away right you would need to kind of build something completely a bit different so that you face challenges by yourself and uh, get to learn how to actually resolve them by reading documentation or looking at questions and answers on stack overflow or even using chat gpt if that's what you uh, like to do but you need to kind of try and and resolve those conflicts or those uh, issues yourself that's really where the uh, exercises or building your project really helps you instead of just copycatting you're actually building something yourself so it's good to follow one of these if you don't have your own idea but at some point you need to make it your own okay so i found this uh, on from another youtuber i just remember seeing it and i thought this was a fantastic resource for this reason the other resource i want to show you now code wars is something i used to do back in the day uh, we were a bunch of developers and we just went in the evenings on thursdays and we just joined groups and we were doing code wars now what it is is basically like these small challenges that you can do in any language that you prefer they present you with a challenge uh, you try and solve it there's many different ways you can solve it and then when you do you can submit it and it's very smart by testing your code and what's nice about this is what i can remember from it is that it also teaches you how to do some unit testing in various different languages and also various different uh, logical problems so if you are struggling with kind of building out logic in, in applications or kind of figuring out uh, how sorting algorithms can work best you know start with code wars because this is not a big project you don't have to commit to it for too long you can just start and you can maybe complete one two or three of these exercises in evening and and that's also going to help a tremendous amount because uh, you basically are faced with challenges uh, in this app all the time and it's just amazing i do not know i think it's still free um, you can check that out but highly recommend code wars another great resource that i want to talk about is uh, roadmap.sh now i've shown this on videos before but i'm every time just blown away uh, by the amount of detail that is in this site so basically what roadmap is uh, developer roadmap is essentially uh, just a journey for you to follow to learn anything you want to if you want to learn backend you just click on this backend tab and it takes you to the path that you can follow exactly step by step kind of in a chronological order for you to understand the backend ecosystem how to work with uh, backend languages you know what is databases how do you work with database languages how do you work with caching web security testing uh, ci cd all these things that goes into backend tasks right so yeah i highly recommend this website because i had some issues before and i didn't know how to solve it i went on here and i just read up on the logic and the understanding behind that and was in the blockchain space and um, it just opened up my mind to think differently about like smart contracts and so on so this is amazing okay and so this might not be a passion project but it might be that start towards a passion project or when you build a passion project so let's say you decide to build a SaaS app or maybe maybe a bit smaller like just a calculator or something and for your calculator uh, you need a front end so you could actually go here and say I'm going to do a React app, right? And then you can just go and start learning React and start implementing it. An alternative is to, you know, learn it from YouTube, the basics as well. So basically, this is not a passion project unless your passion is just to learn almost everything you want to learn but it is a, a means to get uh, your passion project done all right so i mean that's a great resource to use and then of course there's a ton out there we, like there's endless amounts of resources out there but the fact is 
that it really helps when you choose something that you absolutely love. Now let me show you just what I've been building on. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. And here it is, my passion project, which is the Art Creator Studio. So most of you who follow my channel, you know that I've made Hashlips, which is a code generator that layers images. And so this is my take on building a UI version of that, where you can upload your data and just simply start working with it, right? So you upload your files and you create your layers and you can move them around. And so for me, this was really important to try and build out, not merely because I am, was already a front-end developer, but I wanted to learn things like how do I use the file API? Um, how do I connect to the backend and make data processing better, right? Or how do I actually achieve rendering these files on a local browser machine and saving them back on the user's machine using the file API. I wanted to learn these things. And when I started the project, I already had that in mind, saying that, you know what, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna to take a long time for me to build, but I've got time. And, you know, when I can and I have some time available, I would go and type and code a bit on it. And so by doing this, this has also improved how I then code at my work, right? If I have to build out components, I've carefully thought on my passion project, how I want to organize things. So maybe I can take some of those uh, principles and bring it into my work. And that way I can just code faster. I can be more productive. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just think it's a really good balance. So that is the thing. That is the thing that I recommend it is really something that I think is understated how important it is because guys, you know, two, three hours a day of coding at your job is not enough to truly grow your skill and to be comfortable when it comes to coding. And with that, I hope you have a fantastic day.